Hey, I thought it would be fun to talk about how does this hot mess work? Rear engine, it's in the wrong place. Really, why does it this just go SN first everywhere you go? Well, I'm not an engineer, at least not a mechanical engineer, but from what I gather, it's probably because the engine is lightweight and it has a low center of gravity. So if you're looking at these cars, maybe I'll show it to you in a little bit of a different light. I got my trusty pointer here. And maybe this is geared towards, you know, guys like me who've always had like muscle cars and things like that. You know, big block engine with, you know, iron heads and things like that as they came from the factory. You know, so if you were looking at a, you know, this was a big block, you know, with the engine in the front, you know, you'd have your heads up in, up in this area here. And I don't know if you've ever taken apart a big block engine, but those heads are damn heavy. So, uh, they avoided that in these Porsches. So these have an aluminum case. They used to have magnesium cases, which were much lighter. But when they developed the 930 Turbo, they strengthened the case with aluminum. And actually, a Carrera 3.2 casting numbers start with 930. So they do share the case with the Turbo. So you can think of these as a you know, naturally aspirated 930 turbo engine in many regards. So, with that being said, if you look down here into the engine compartment, you know, this is not the, the crank pulley. This is for just the fan, the alternator is behind here. The crank pulley is way down here. In the center of it, is even further down. It would be way below this. So on the outside of the car, the center of the crank probably is somewhere here, just above the middle of the license plate, which means the center of the center of gravity of the car is probably just above this rub strip, the center of gravity of the crankshaft. So looking at the car from the side, You're looking at somewhere in here is where the center line of the engine is. So it's a single overhead cam, two valve engine, and it's a wide splay on the valves. So you have one valve cover down here, and you have another valve cover up here, and the camshaft would be running somewhere around here. Okay? The engine ends somewhere around here. So really the, the meat of the engine, the weight would be right in this area right here, okay? The intake from all of this up is relatively light compared to the weight of obviously two camshafts, the crankshaft, the rods, all that. So yeah, your weight would be isolated here. And here, right in there. So that would be the engine's center gravity. The transaxle would run from the front of the engine here and it kind of takes up this area here. Up in here's the torque tube here. This goes through the car. And the transmission goes almost right up to that. So it would be this area here. And the way I remember it, so the flywheel would be around here. The shafts go up probably around this area here, the center line of the crankshaft. And then the gears are in here and it comes back here to the center, obviously where the where the axle is. So, somehow all of this low center of gravity allows the car to handle flat because when you turn, you don't have all that weight 
Like if this was a V engine, you'd have cylinders coming up into here and you'd have heads up in here. And when you turn the car, just say you're turning left, all of that weight would come this way and call, cause the car to lean. Whereas this doesn't really have that. So if you're used to American cars and your V8 engines and you were kind of wondering how this whole thing worked, well, that's how Porsche got away with it. You still can't change the laws of physics. Um, being that you do have most of the weight here behind the rear axle, you do have throttle lift oversteer. Although, as I said in previous videos, by now these cars had decent meat on the back, right? And modern rubber keep these things on the road much better, although it is always there. You have to be careful. Um, I hit a bump one time. I went down into a bump and it lifted the rear end a little bit and it did shift over violently. So it is possible. But it's not as bad as maybe the earlier ones with smaller uh, wheel and tire packages. So one final note, if you look at the car, it's still relatively narrow. Even though the 1989s like this, they, they did have an 8 inch wide uh, wheel. And as the weight of the engines grew, that's why if you look at the newer ones, they have to definitely have to be wider in the back. Because if you were to rebuild your engine and you go from two valves per cylinder to four valves per cylinder, if you weigh all that up, the valve springs, retainers, the valves themselves, an extra cam per cylinder, yes, you have the possibility to make a lot more horsepower, but you're adding a lot more weight in the back. So, if you ever want to know why a air-cooled 911 can kind of pull this stuff off, yeah, combination of a, a simple lightweight engine, air-cooled, and a low center of gravity. So hopefully this was a little helpful and lightning if you weren't familiar with how these things work, but there you go. So I hope you enjoyed the video. We'll catch you on the next one. Bye.